Welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church Online. My name is Marian Brown, one of the associate pastors, and this is our on-demand version of the sermon that will be preached on this Sunday morning. And please know that our Sunday services will be live streamed beginning at 9 a.m. for the contemporary service and 11.15 for the traditional service. If you would like to have the entire worship experience on demand, that will be available on Monday morning. We appreciate you being a part of our online community and we invite you to be active and participate through your giving. And so we thank you for your support and your generosity. Before we listen to this Sunday sermon, let's have a moment of prayer. Gracious and holy Lord, we ask that you remind us that wherever we are, we are on holy ground. And so may you help us make space. So may we receive a message that you have for us in this moment. Be in our hearts so that it's open. Be in our ears so that they are open and be a part of our lives so that we are open to receive a challenge and an invitation. Work within us now and all around us so that we may know your presence and we may feel it fully. Through a moment now of words and scripture, speak to us, amen. Let's listen to this Sunday sermon. Greetings. My name is Jeff Ross. I'm one of the associate pastors here at the Roswell United Methodist Church. Thanks for tuning in to this service of worship. I look forward to our time together. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, for the chance to open your word, uh, to look in, to uh, see what word you have for us today. For it's in Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen. So our scripture passage is uh, from Jeremiah chapter 37, verse 17. And it says, Now King Zedekiah sent men and took him out, which was Jeremiah. And in his palace, the king secretly asked Jeremiah and said, is there a word from the Lord? May God add his blessing to our hearing and reading and understanding his word. So I wonder, I bet you've seen one of those movies where uh, the scene opens up and it's some sort of intense fight or struggle or uh, it's all of a sudden just lots of action and things taking place. Uh, and people scurrying around and characters looking frazzled and weary. And then the next scene is a completely different place and there's a, probably some sort of banner on the screen that says five years earlier or six months earlier or uh, some time frame. And so you know you're, that what you just saw in the movie was the end, the culmination of everything that you're now about to see. Well, uh, uh, our sermon is like that uh, this morning. Uh, we start off here in Zedekiah with this verse that uh, we just read, um, that Zedekiah brings Jeremiah to the palace and said, is there any word from the Lord? Uh, and in that scene, there's desperation, uh, Zedekiah closes the door. He's afraid of who might see. Um, he lights a candle uh, and he asks Jeremiah if there's any hope. And so the audience is left wondering, any hope? Any hope for what? What's going on? What's taking place? Well, to get the story, the whole story, uh, we need to go back about a hundred years. Um, and so Zedekiah is in about 600 B.C. 
And uh, so we need to go back to 700 uh, BC uh, to see what's coming on. So in 700 BC, Hezekiah uh, is the king and he's been sick. He's been deathly sick. He's going to die. He invites Isaiah, the prophet at that time, uh, to come and pray for him and try to get the Lord to uh, heal him. So Isaiah comes, they have this conversation, they pray, uh, and God says, okay, I'll give you 15 more years of life. And he heals Hezekiah. Well, uh, at that time, people all over the region uh, have uh, heard that Hezekiah is sick. And so some envoys, some ambassadors, some people from Babylon, uh, which is just to the northeast of Jerusalem and Judah, uh, have heard about King uh, Hezekiah's illness. They come to see him. And I think that Hezekiah is still kind of woozy from the medicine because he's very grateful. He thanks them for coming. He reads over the get well card. He laughs. He, he puts it off to the side and he decides to take the Babylonians on a tour. Uh, And so they go see all the major places. But then Hezekiah, again, a little drunk from his medicine, takes the Babylonians down to the treasury. What? Yeah, he does. He takes them down to the treasury and he shows them all of the treasures uh, that, that Judah has, that the, the, uh, that's in Jerusalem. And, um, and that's legendary stuff. If you, if you go back even further uh, in the Old Testament, you remember the story of Solomon, who's this great king. He has more money and wealth than anybody in all the world. It's legendary. Uh, and so the Babylonians have heard about this, and now they get to see it. And so the Babylonians thank Hezekiah for the great tour. Uh, They go on their way. And then Isaiah, the prophet, comes to Hezekiah and he says, what's been going on? Hezekiah says, well, I had some folks from Babylon come and and wish me well. well, What did you do with them? Well, I kind of took them on a tour. What did you let them see? Well, I let them see everything. You didn't take them to the treasury, did you? Yeah, I even took them down to the treasury. Well, Isaiah blows a gasket. What in the world, Hezekiah, have you done? And so then Isaiah prophesies about the destruction that's coming uh, Israel's way. And so fast forward now about 80 years and we're at 620 B.C. And we find that there's this interesting struggle going on. Uh, You can see on the map that uh, Egypt is down in the southwest Uh, Babylon is up in the northeast, and Jerusalem is right in the middle. And so, uh, interestingly, Egypt and Babylon are in a war. And so, what happens in a war? Well, number one, you need money. Well, okay, so let's think, who has money? Uh, Where could we get some money if we're running out? Gosh, if there was only a place where we could go and there was an unlimited supply of money, oh, that's right. Yeah, Hezekiah a few years ago took us on a tour and we've been telling everybody in Babylon about this uh, treasure deposit that's right here in our backyard. The second thing to notice about the map is that Jerusalem's kind of strategically located between Egypt and Babylon. So it's not only wealthy, but it's strategic. And so uh, around 620... uh, B.C., Egypt uh, sneaks into Judah and they kill the king. And then Egypt sets up a sort of a puppet government. Egypt kind of takes over, runs in, sets up their own king uh, so that they have this advantage financially and um, uh, uh, geographically over Babylon. Well, the problem with that was that the king double crosses the Pharaoh uh, and then... uh, uh, and so the Pharaoh kills the, the king of Judah. Well, about that time, Babylon and Egypt have stopped yelling at each other and they actually have a real life war and Babylon wins. 
So Babylon comes in and sets up their own puppet king uh, over Judah uh, and, um, um, and then starts systematically taking the money and the bright educated people uh, and they're importing all of this or exporting it to Babylon. They're taking it from Judah and this happens over uh, a number of years. Well, the king, uh, the puppet king of Judah that Babylon has installed double crosses Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the king of <laughs> uh, Babylon. And so uh, it's, it's such a mess. And so now uh, Babylon inserts to another king uh, into the mix, and, uh, and that's Zedekiah, who is the one that we started with in the scripture passage that's meeting with um, Jeremiah. He's meeting with Jeremiah because all through this period of the war between Egypt and uh, Babylon and that whole conflict, Jeremiah has been the constant voice of God trying to help the king uh, make sense of all that's taken place. But the king also has a number of other influencers uh, that are also speaking into his ear and he doesn't know what to do. But the thing that wins out at the end of the day for Zedekiah is his greed, his arrogance, his fear, and his lack of courage. Jeremiah tells him what to do to save the nation, but Zedekiah won't do it. So in chapters 37, Jeremiah is put in prison uh, by the people who are uh, speaking in the other ear of Zedekiah. Zedekiah finds out that he's been put in prison. He, he gets him out of prison, but keeps him under house arrest. That lasts for a little while, but then the, the advisors to the king do an end run around the king and put Jeremiah, this time, in a cistern. They drop him down into a well, and he sinks waist deep into the mud, and he's left there to die. But again, the king finds out, it frees him, gets him out, uh, puts him in a safer house. And, uh, and then just days before the Babylonian invasion, um, Zedekiah uh, and his family flee through a secret passageway to escape. Uh, the family is hunted down and killed, just like Jeremiah had prophesied. Zedekiah is brought before Nebuchadnezzar and his eyes are gouged out and he's thrown into prison. I tell you this story to get the context for the verse that we read. So with all of that history, a hundred years of just messed up stuff, um, Zedekiah in the last few hours comes to Jeremiah and, and closes the door and then asks Jeremiah, is there any word from the Lord? Is there any word from the Lord? There's a, a song we're going to play uh, at, at church. So if you're watching this online, you might want to look it up. It's called Shet de Do. <laughs> it's a Jamaican uh, spiritual song, Shet the Door. Uh, if you Google it, it'll come up, and it, uh, the basic chorus of it is shut the door, keep out the devil, shut the door, keep the devil in the night. Shut the door, keep out the devil, light a candle, everything's going to be all right. And so uh, those two stories for me go together, the song and this section of... Uh, Jeremiah, you can, you can also read this whole story in 2 Kings chapter 22 through 25. It's a more condensed version than the Jeremiah part, but it tells the whole story of what I, I've just gone over. And so in this story, you see that the devil uh, has been all over. He's had a field day with the Judean monarchy for a hundred years, decades, as they made bad choices. A quick read of chapter... 
Jeremiah 37 and 38, it's clear that uh, Zedekiah knows what to do. He has the resources at his disposal to do the right thing, but he just can't do the right thing. He calls Jeremiah in. They go behind a closed door. They light a candle for guidance and direction, but still Zedekiah can't do the right thing. And so I I thought of that story, and I thought of the human dilemma that you and I have as well. Uh, There's lots of times we know what to do. Uh, we, We pray, we ask God, we have a good friend that gives us direction and guidance, we have somebody that advises us, or, or, or we, we read or study, or we just have an intuition, we know what to do, but we don't do it. It's kind of like what Paul talks about in Romans 7, uh, the very good we want to do, we don't do, the very evil we don't want to do, we do. Why? Why is that? Why do we do that? And so that's the, the struggle uh, that we have. And so the song, Shut the Door, Keep Out the Devil. When I first heard that song, it's a cute song. It's got a great rhythm. It's, it's something you can clap your hands to and stomp your feet to, but it's kind of simplistic. Doesn't it sound like? Shut the door, keep out the devil. Shut the door, keep the devil in the night. Uh, it, 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 when I first heard that song, I thought, well, okay, so the devil's coming. All I have to do is shut the door and the devil will stay away and he'll bang on the door, but he can't get in. I don't know about your reality, but that's not my reality. That's not the reality that I see in the world. Just a closed door doesn't seem sufficient to keep the devil out. And so um, I, I, I kept thinking of this song as sort of as a defensive posture. Uh, here's the devil, here's a situation I'm struggling with, here's a battle in my life, here's a thing that's happening. Oh no, what do I do? What am I going to do? I'm terrified, I'm scared, I'm afraid. Oh, I'm just going to shut the door uh, and then I'll light a candle so I can see and everything will be okay. Well, I don't... I don't I, I, don't, I, I can't interview the author of the song. It's an old, 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 old song. But I think the, the message of the song really is, is something different. And I think it goes to the heart of the story and of what's taken place in Jeremiah and what's taken place in our lives as well. Um, sometimes we, uh, we look at a verse like, uh, like we do here and we can get kind of sidetracked just looking at that one verse. But if we take the whole uh, story, the whole Bible, the Old and New Testament as a congruent whole, it, it tells a different story. Sometimes we take a verse, we pull it out of context and we say it means this. And, and when you look at the whole context, it really doesn't mean that. It means something else. And so what's happening Um, if you look through the Bible, some really interesting things happen behind closed doors. Jesus uh, encouraged his disciples, when you pray, uh, go away, close the door, light a candle, uh, and pray not to be seen by everybody else, but to spend time with God. When Jesus was crucified, they put him in a tomb and they closed the door. And then this miracle happened behind the door. When Jesus was born, he went to the inn and they closed the door and they sent Jesus away. In probably the most important part of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, knock and the door shall be opened. The disciples were locked in an upper room and behind those locked upper room doors, uh, the miracle of Pentecost Uh, took place. So when I put all that together, I I realized that uh, shut the door, keep out the devil is not a defensive posture at all. It's an offensive posture. When we feel the pressure, when we're struggling, when we're uh, wondering what's going to take place and how we're going to deal with it, uh, sometimes closing the door to separate ourselves from all that's happening, lighting a candle which uh, is uh, uh, symbolic of inviting the Word of God and the Spirit of God into our presence. Sometime in that space, we discover the answer that we're looking for, uh, uh, and we've had to get away to see that. It's the same thing that happens on Sunday morning in church. 
is the, the doors are open and people come, you're greeted by the greeters and the ushers, we find our place, uh, and then as the service starts, the doors are closed. The choir sings, the preacher preaches, the organist and pianist play, uh, the uh, people greet each other, we pray together. Uh, the light of Christ comes in and is uh, placed on the altar, candles. Uh, so we're in a closed space with the light of Christ, the candle turned on. And it's, it's in that place that we uh, discover many times God's word, God's spirit, God's presence. It's, it's not a bunker uh, to shut us out from uh, all the things around us. It's not a fortress Uh, But it's a place to gather our wits, to formulate a plan, to receive the Holy Spirit, and then go back out. The doors are open. The light of Christ guides our path, and His light guides our steps. We've not come to hold up in this place and dodge some satanic arrow, but we come to gain clarity and purpose and resolve and conviction and nerve to be the people that we couldn't be on our own, but having been behind the door and basking in the light, we now can be. And so I I think that uh, that rings true to each of us, that we come to church with Zedekiah's question on our lips, is there any word from the Lord today? Is there any word from the Lord today for ourselves, for our marriage, for our family, for our friends, for our health, for our nation, for our world, for our life, for our sanity? Is there any word from the Lord to guide us, to help us, to move us forward? So Zedekiah invites Jeremiah because he senses and sees Jeremiah's connection with God and he closes the door and he lights a candle and he says, Jeremiah, is there any word from the Lord because the Babylonians are at the doorstep? Uh, the, the scent of uh, 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 devastation is in the air. Uh, Zedekiah is terrified for himself and his family and his people and his nation, and he, and he wants to know, is God going to save them in this place? Sadly, Zedekiah had many chances. The word of the Lord came to him through Jeremiah on a number of occasions, and even in this occasion as Jeremiah speaks, Zedekiah will not do what Jeremiah tells him to do. He receives a word from the Lord but doesn't do it. And that's, that's the struggle that, uh, that Paul talked about again in, in Romans 7. It's the struggle we face with our humanity. Uh, we hear the voice of God, we, we hear the voice of reason, uh, and many times we do what we need to do, but sometimes we're stubborn. Sometimes we're pride-filled. Sometimes uh, the cost of what uh, it's going to take to do the right thing, we weigh it and we go... Nah, I'm just not going to do it. And that's the, that's the dilemma. That's the struggle that we face. You know, when we get anxious, uh, when we get nervous, when we get fearful, a lot of times, especially as kids, don't we? We run into our room and we close the door. And... Um, and it's in that closed door time, people are banging on the door, let me in, let me in. No, I just want to be alone. And it's behind those closed doors that we process what just happened. We process the event that just took place. We process why we were yelling and angry and mad and uh, why we didn't get what we want. And, it, and, and, and the, the symbol of that is lighting a candle, light, right? Light, allowing light 
to come in and speak to the situation. And oftentimes, as we're alone and as we're in that place and as we pray and as we think and as we process, uh, we begin to go, oh, okay, well, that's what happened and that's what I need to do. And we come away with a clarity of purpose and of design. Psalms 119.105 says, Thy word, God, is a lamp uh, unto my feet, and it's a light for my path. Shut the door, keep out the devil. Shut the door, keep the devil in the night. Shut the door, keep out the devil. Light a candle, everything's all right. The wisdom, I think, behind that song and this passage and this illustration of Zedekiah and Jeremiah is that as we face struggles, battles, questions, uh, uh, an unknown future, uh, 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 something that might be great that we're being offered, when we don't know what to do, it's not a defensive posture to hide in our room, but it's an offensive posture to go close the door, light a candle to receive light, direction, purpose, hope, comfort, peace from God so that we can emerge from that place ready to tackle whatever it is that lies ahead. Let us pray. God, I thank you for your word. It is a light. Uh, it does guide us. It does direct us. Sometimes we just need to get away. We just need to close the door, get by ourselves, and think and meditate and pray and make sense of it all. And, and God, we know the temptation is so very real that even when we hear the word and we know it's your word, there's still the struggle to do what we know to do. And that is such a big struggle with, with each of us. God, give us the courage, give us the strength. Set your Holy Spirit loose in our lives that we might have the courage and strength to not only hear your word, but do it. For it's in Christ's name we pray, amen. God bless you. Hope you have a great week. Thank you so much for joining us online. It is a blessing to have the gift of technology to have sermon this way. We thank you for participating. And just a reminder, if you want to see the live services, 9 a.m. on Sunday for contemporary and 1115 Sunday morning for traditional services. And always we will have the full on-demand worship experience on Monday morning. And if there's ever a time that you would like to join us here at the physical location, we're located at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, Roswell, Georgia. We wanna be connected with you. If you have a prayer request, please let us know by emailing pray at rumc.com. And we would love for you to be a part of our ministry through your giving. If you would like to support our campus and our ministries, you can do so at rumc.com slash give. And now hear these words of a benediction. Love without fear, serve with commitment. And in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go in peace, amen.